Well, I finally have my new sawmill out here, a Woodland Mills HM122 Bushland trailer, and I'm pretty excited. It took a while to put together, it was a bit tedious, but I got it done. I was going to do a video of um, unboxing it and putting it together and assembling it, but then I decided that this wasn't a comedy channel, so you didn't need to see that. And on that note, just to be upfront with you guys, um, usually on this channel, if I'm making a video about something, it's because I have a generally good idea of what I'm talking about. That is not the case with this sawmill. This is something that's totally new to me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, this is gonna be a learning process for me. So if you came here looking for advice, this is a very bad place to find it. But if some of you have advice to give, feel free to leave it in the comments. You've given me some great ideas lately and I really appreciate it. So anyway, I'm going to deploy this thing, get it all nice and level and set up, and I anticipate a little bit of difficulty, um, especially since it'll be my first time. But once I do that, we'll do some cutting. But first I'll give you guys kind of a walk around and let you know some of my initial thoughts. So I'm sure by now you guys are pretty familiar with Woodland Mills. They've really blown up over the last few years. Uh, for their affordability and quality, so I won't bore you too much with the details. I think the one thing that makes this unique versus other models is, of course, uh, the trailer. Uh, it's an off-road trailer. They call it the Bushlander model, and so we have the off-road tires, just a very simple mechanism there, and an extension which folds up and locks down to the saw head. So obviously I don't need to tell you that it works, seeing as how I got it out here, but some of the functionality kind of comes off as a bit of an afterthought. Um, it's the exact same model as the HM122. The only thing that makes it different is it just has the off-road tires and of course the uh, extension with the lockdown mechanism. So it still has these handles that are sticking out which are very liable to grab onto things and you kind of have to take some stuff off before you go out in the woods and reassemble it. I got very lucky with this cable here um, there's really no reason that shouldn't have snagged on some branches, uh, but you know, it had mercy on me, I guess. And this handle, it seems like you can make that threaded and kind of have the, the ability to take that off. I understand that that would just be another engineered part, but it would be nice because uh, I had to constantly keep watch of that to make sure it didn't snag on any trees. Also the hinge for the uh, trailer extension leaves something to be desired. They made it in such a way that it's able to be fine-tuned, which is great but I already kind of broke something on it, which you know, admittedly was my fault, but it's something that's very easy to do. So these are kind of the, whoops, uh, these are kind of the tensioners here, I don't know what you call them, but they help lock it down and they're very loose. They just kind of float around and I had this kind of on a slope. So they would kind of tend towards um, floating in one direction. And then I lifted it up and it just completely ripped that out and I couldn't even feel it because this thing is just a massive lever, of course, when you uh, flip it up. So I have one missing, I took it off, I was kind of trying to repair it uh, to no avail. So I only have one right now, hopefully I can still use it for now with just one. I might have to think of something like um, ratcheting it down or something of that sort. But yeah, it just seems like that's something that's very easy to do, something in line with hitting your log stops. Just Seem, seems like it'll inevitably happen if you use this thing long enough. The other thing I did, which was just sheer stupidity, was I left this on. It doesn't really, you can't flip it up like you can in other trailers because you have the frame in the way. Um, so it either has to stay there or you have to take it off. And I left it on and pretty quickly it snagged on a rock and bent a little bit. Not a big deal. And actually it came with like two or three of those. I didn't know why at first and now I think I understand. Um, but yeah, that was, I just was, excited to get it in here and wasn't really thinking. And then you have these legs here, which is kind of, they're on these little bolts and they just fall down like that. I anticipate having some trouble keeping those afloat. I think probably every morning I'm gonna have to readjust things a little bit to make sure it's level. But admittedly, I am nitpicking a little bit. I mean, this thing is super sturdy, super well built and I'm pretty impressed with the overall quality and feel so far, although I haven't even turned it on, so it might be a bit early to say that. So anyway, let's get this thing set up and start cutting.
All right, well, I got it all set up, looking nice and level. Uh, it wasn't too bad. I did actually almost bend the other clasp for the uh, extension, so I really got to watch, watch out for that. It's super easy to do. Uh, other than that, it was just a little bit tedious, but uh, pretty easy, honestly. Unfortunately for me, I have to head home because I hear some thunder in the distance. I didn't quite beat the clock on that one, but you guys get the advantage of a time warp, so let's begin. I'll tell you what, it's a slightly different skill set to unpile logs than it is to pile logs. So I'm going to have to get the hang of that. But uh, I was also just trying to be super careful while I get the hang of it because obviously uh, the grapple on this just dangles. So I have to have a lot of control of the log before I bring it over to the mill here because I don't want to bash up my saw head. But anyway, the moment of truth is here. I have my first log on the rails and uh, let's give this thing a shot. So one of the skill sets I'm going to have to learn here is basically being able to plan how I'm gonna mill this log. So this is a nine inch top diameter balsam fir log. And I think what I can do is get three two by eight boards and it's a 10 foot log. And I do kind of have, you know, a, a list of all the boards that I need. So I can kind of optimize based on that. But a question that I'll have is, um, so like the with the top pieces, can I get two two by sixes out of the top pieces and three two by eights out of the center? Uh, things like that, I'm not, I'm not really sure how I can best optimize this. I'm sure I'm going to be milling inefficiently and kind of wasting some slab pieces at first, but um, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what I can do here. Okay, I'll tell you what, man, that is pretty slick. That is cool. Um, that's the only word I can use to describe it as slick. It just glides through the wood like butter. Um, yeah, this is gonna be fun. I'm going to enjoy this a lot. But I did kind of want to show you guys what I mean about um, slabs and kind of using the wood as efficiently as possible. I feel like I could have gotten like an eight foot uh, two by four out of this if I wanted to. Is that feasible to do? I don't really know. I'm gonna have to practice. I'm gonna have to look at some techniques and so forth. Um, there, there is quite a bit of taper on some of these logs. Uh, fir does kind of taper quite a bit, especially in the second and third logs. Um, so I'm probably, I mean, I'm just gonna have to expect a little more waste. But uh, yeah, just kind of wanted to show you guys how extreme some of that slab can be. All right, let's uh, continue here.
All right, well, that log definitely could have gone better. I only got two two by sixes out of it. Um, there's a couple reasons for that, miscalculations. Also, I think my guides are off. So uh, when I was cutting the last two, it seemed to go down at like a 15 degree pitch. So it ended with one being like a, a three by six and the other being a one by six. Um, I don't know. It's a learning process. Well, today's been a day of learning, that is for certain. Uh, my production pile is about as big as my waste pile, if that tells you anything. But as I go, each edge is getting less loggy and more edgy, so that's a good sign. Now, I think some of the key things I've learned today, so first off, um, the first few cuts, my blade was way too loose. I kind of misinterpreted the instructions. So it says two to three turns um, from snug. And there is actually a very specific definition of snug, which is in the manual, but you know, who reads those? Honestly, it needs to be a lot tighter than you'd expect. And uh, I used to play violin in high school, so I have a little bit of metal under tension related traumas. I thought it was gonna snap at any moment, but uh, that's how it's supposed to be. Another key revelation I've had today is the impact of taper on how exactly you cut a log. So, you know, you know logs are tapered, but it's a compounded effect because you're combining the angles of both sides of taper. So the best example I can think of is a traffic cone. Imagine you lie a traffic cone on the side and then you cut in from uh, the top diameter. By the time that gets to the end, you're, you know, most of the, the traffic cone is gonna be your edge. And while that seems obvious, and I did watch some other YouTube videos that had mentioned that effect, uh, I didn't fully conceptualize it until I started milling and I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So kind of how I've been counteracting that is I have um, some blocks of various sizes and I just kind of prop up the top end to uh, try to counteract some of that taper so I can get more of a, an edge going. You only need to do that until you get your 90 degree angle and then you're fine, but it can be tricky. Um, it's easy to go too far. It's easy to go not enough. You really have to get some intuition there. And it's the hardest with the small end pieces. I have a lot of four and five inch tops and I've been trying to make some four by four posts and I, I just can't get it right. They always end up being four by three, which I'm using for um, basically my pallets to put the, the boards on so it's not wasted. But I, I've only gotten one four by four post. The rest have all turned out four by three and I, it's, I can't do it. And in terms of keeping this thing level, I underestimated how sensitive this thing was to anything out of spec. It has to be perfectly level in order to give you a nice straight cut. Um, the good news is, there is a lot of redundancy in the legs. So it, it doesn't seem to fall out of spec very easily. I'll check it periodically and especially after milling some heavier logs and it's fine. It doesn't fall out of spec, but you, you have to spend some time to get that thing perfect at first. Although I will take that back a little because while editing this video, I was reviewing the footage and I realized that the rails were actually moving a little bit with the weight of the saw head. Uh, so I'm gonna have to shore that up tomorrow, add some log faces or something to give the legs more surface area to prevent that from happening. But I'm glad I caught that. And finally, the number one issue I've had, which has been incredibly frustrating right up until the last hour or so, is getting this thing zeroed and learning how to read the scale. Holy, that's hard. And while I'm perfectly willing to admit that everything I've experienced so far has been user error, uh, I. I'm leaning towards there being something a little funny with the log scale. I feel like that could be designed a little bit better. Let me explain what I mean. 
So, so the cool thing they did is this comes with two scales that are a vinyl magnetic strip, so you can swap them out. This one has your uh, predetermined widths for different boards with the kerf already calculated in. Um, but this one's not super flexible and you kind of have to re-zero it a lot. So I'm not using this one. So this is the scale I'm using right now. This is just the nominal ruler basically. It doesn't have any of the cumulative kerf issues or anything like that. So it's a little more flexible and I prefer to just do the calculations in my head anyway. Um, now you might be wondering why it's upside down. Well, that's because this reticle here, whatever you want to call it, um, this is stationary. It's mounted to the frame itself. This bar is not. This bar is attached to the saw head. Um, so the way I have it configured, it's measuring the distance the blade is from the base of the mill, right? So at four inches, it's four inches uh, above the base. So if you watch, as I crank it up, well, it's hard to do that with one hand. Anyway, as I crank it up um, and I'm raising the saw head, it will increase the distance. So that makes sense. It seems to me that's the way it should be, but it's not. I'm sure there is a reason why. I just can't figure it out. No, my main issue though is these gray marks right here. Um, they have two scales on this at the same time. So it's kind of hard to see, but I was thinking these were the um, kerf indicators. So it's uh, 1.5 millimeters for the kerf uh, that they have on all the scales. So I'm like, okay, well that's the kerf but uh, you know, I'll just kind of ignore those as I see fit. The problem is, it, to me, it looked at first like those were the inch markers. They are not. So this is actually a three quarter inch and inch scale in the same bar. So, and there's like a circle up there to indicate it, which I didn't see. So uh, I kept using these gray things, thinking that they were the inch markers, but they are the quarter inch markers. The actual inch markers are just the full thin bars that go across like that three you can see right there, uh, which makes more sense, but I was pretty much just going up to six, so it wasn't totally obvious to me. So it took me longer than I care to admit to figure that out. Um, so again, I, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm perfectly willing to admit that everything is user error, but I, this just feels like it could be better. But overall, and I cannot stress this enough, this thing has been a blast. This thing is awesome. I'm so happy, I'm so excited. Uh, you know, it's been challenging at times because uh, this is this is something brand new to me. So it's been a learning process. It's been frustrating, but this is fun work. Like this is fun. I'm pretty tired right now, but I cannot wait to put an iced coffee in my thermos tomorrow morning and get right out here as early as I can. So with that said, I'm going to head home, but there's going to be a lot more content on the way. So stay tuned till next time.